Welcome to Auto Cars Review of the 2014 Geneva Motor Show. And we'll start with the car you see behind me, Lamborghini's Huracan supercar, the replacement for the 10-year-old Gallardo. Revealed here today, the Huracan, which as Lamborghini tradition dictates, is named after a famous fighting bull, breaks new technical ground thanks to novel hybrid aluminium and carbon fibre construction. The new structure is not just stiffer than the outgoing Gallardo's by a whopping 50%, but it's also some 10% lighter. Still, the Huracan at 1,420 kilos without fluids is a teeny bit chubbier than the car it replaces, partly because it's an awful lot nicer inside and partly because it has a new twin-clutch automatic gearbox rather than the old single-clutch automated manual. Purists might weep that there's no three-pedal manual this time, but it's absent because only 2% of Gallardo customers ever ordered one. What this entry-level Lamborghini does retain in mind is a naturally aspirated V10 donkey driving through all four wheels. We're told it's an all-new unit, displacing 5.2 litres and putting out a distinctly unshabby 602 horsepower. That's good for a top speed of more than 200 miles an hour. Acceleration from rest to 62 miles an hour takes 3.2 seconds, and the sprint to 124 miles an hour, that's 200 kilometres an hour, wants less than 10 seconds. The Hurricane will cost around £190,000 when it goes on sale in the second half of this year. This is the production version of Citroën's C4 Cactus, arguably the most radical car for decades in the Volkswagen Golf class. Besides its unusual looks, the Cactus is meant to revolutionise ease of ownership and, priced at between 13 and 18 grand, be markedly cheaper to buy and run than its rivals. However, the Cactus's greatest achievement is how little it weighs. In base form, it's less than a tonne, 60 kilos lighter than an equivalent Ford Fiesta, meaning the entry-level engine need only be an 80 horsepower, 1 litre, 3 cylinder unit. Inside, the Cactus is functional and simple. There are only 12 buttons on the dashboard and there is no rev counter or centre console. If it's a success, expect Citroën to adopt a similar approach on other models in future. Renault's third generation Twingo city car is as radical as the Citroën, not because it's cheap, but because it's rear engine and rear wheel drive, a remarkably unusual setup these days. Despite being the first Twingo to offer four doors, it's a full 10 centimetres shorter than the car it replaces, so is only three and a half metres long. It'll go on UK sale in September, with prices that Renault claims will be competitive, which means it should cost from under 10 grand. There are two engine options at launch, 70 and 90 horsepower three-cylinder petrol units. At the Geneva show, Renault told us a faster Renault Sport version wasn't planned because nobody buys a 15 grand city car. If so, that seems like a terrible shame. A short, agile car like this that is correct wheel drive and tweaked by Renault Sport engineers would be a pretty tantalising proposition. Let's hope they change their mind. This is McLaren's 650S, a development of the company's 12C supercar, only with extra power, a hike in price and, it's claimed, that is more rewarding to drive. Costing £195,000 in coupe form, or £215,000 as a Spider, the 650S is closely related to the 12C, but 20 grand more expensive. It gets its 650 name from its output in metric horsepower, that's 641 of the Queen's horses, an increase of almost 40 over the regular 12C, which remains on sale. The 650 is differentiated by being a slightly more hardcore prospect. Inside there is Alcantara trim and fixed back seats. While springs are stiffened, the aerodynamic balance has changed, and the 650S is claimed to have more ability where it counts, which we take to mean it'll be more rewarding near the limit. Some 25% of the 650S is different to the 12C. The basic 3.8 litre twin turbo engine is the same, but there are changes to the cylinder head, pistons and engine management software. Torque is now up to 500 foot-pounds and the 650S is claimed to hit 60 miles an hour from rest in 3 seconds dead, 125 in 8.4 seconds, a full second faster than the 12C. Maserati wants to sell nearly 50,000 cars a year, and if this Alfieri concept is anything to go by, it thinks it needs a coupe that's more relevant than the lovely but vast Gran Turismo to do it. The Alfieri concept is based on a Gran Turismo MC Stradale, but shortened by almost a foot. At 4.6 metres long then, it's more in line with the Jaguar F-Type and Porsche 911, and Maserati is said to have targeted a curb weight of less than 1,400 kilos. That sounds optimistic to us, especially given that the Alfieri retains the Gran Turismo's transaxle and its 4.7 litre V8 motor, but it develops 460 horses and drives the back wheels through a limited slip differential, so it should get along pretty nicely. It also uses the MC Stradale's carbon ceramic brakes and Brembo calipers. 
Maserati bosses are calling the Alfieri a present to the staff who have stuck with the company through its highs and lows. But if a production car looks anything like this, we reckon there'll be more than a few customers who appreciate it too. The Alfa Romeo 4C Spider is a fairly straightforward proposition. You take a regular 4C, lop off the roof, and there you have it, one 4C Spider. Well, almost. Removing the glass fibre panel and replacing it with a canvas one adds only 60 kilos to the 4C Coupe's weight, thanks to the adoption of a carbon fibre roll hoop, windscreen, frame and spoilers. There's also, just for fun, a new titanium and carbon fibre exhaust, as well as tweaks to the 4C's headlight design, about the only bit of the car some people didn't like the look of, and a new design of alloy wheel. Otherwise, that's your lot. Performance provided by the heavily turbocharged motor is unchanged. The 4C Spider's top speed is 155 miles an hour, and it'll hit 62 miles an hour in 4.5 seconds, just like the coupe. Expect it to reach production at the start of next year. You might remember the last time we had a turbocharged car, said Ferrari's boss Luca di Montezemolo this morning. He's right, we do, because it was the F40. Now Ferrari is bringing turbocharging back into its model range with the introduction of the California T. The California T has a 3.8 litre twin turbo V8, producing 552 horsepower and 557 pounds-feet of torque, all driving the rear wheels through a twin clutch gearbox. The new engine constitutes part of a facelift for the California that also includes new carbon ceramic brakes, revised steering response, new springs and dampers and a subtle exterior makeover. The inside has been significantly upgraded too, including the adoption of a new central touchscreen. Performance figures are all improved a bit. The 0-62 mile an hour time is now 3.6 seconds and the top speed is 196 miles an hour. CO2 emissions are also down to 250 grams per kilometre with the stop-start system. Ferrari hasn't announced a price yet, but expect it to be pretty similar to the current model's £152,000. The third generation Audi TT will go on sale this autumn with an all new, albeit evolutionary, exterior style and a range of cleaner, more powerful engines. Described as new from the ground up, the latest TT will have a range of 1.8 and 2 litre four cylinder engines with power outputs ranging from 180 horsepower to 296 horsepower for the TTS, which will top the range initially. However, Audi also displayed this TT Quattro Sport concept at the Geneva show, which Audi calls an extreme driving machine. Its 2-litre turbocharged engine has been turned up to 414 horsepower, which it sends to all four wheels via a dual-clutch gearbox. A limited production run isn't out of the question. The regular TT, meanwhile, is a touch smaller than the car it replaces and weighs up to 50 kilos less thanks to a more advanced new platform. Base models will be front drive as standard, with four-wheel drive coming further up the range. They might call this a concept, but the Honda Civic Type R is barely a year away from showrooms and this variant is as close a preview of it as you'll need. The car's extreme appearance, which is all vents and wings, bears out Honda's claim that the Type R is not so much a hot version of a standard Civic as a road legal version of a racing one. It sits more than an inch lower than a standard Civic and all of the car's development engineers have been focused on one thing, making this the fastest hot hatchback around the Nürburgring. Expect it to be pretty extreme on the road then. In fact, Honda claims it will be the most extreme Type R yet, and for a company that made the Integra, that's quite a claim. The engine is a brand new 2-litre turbocharged one, which Honda says is good for 280 horsepower, although privately engineers will admit it's more like 300, with 300 pounds-feet of torque from just 2,000 revs. Expect to see a production version looking remarkably similar to this in the coming months. And finally, just when you thought you'd seen the last of Gumpert, which ran into financial problems last year, it returns not just with the Apollo supercar, but with an entirely new model too. The Explosion is a €100,000 rally-inspired coupe. Its interior gets a lot of parts from the old Audi TT, and its chassis is made from carbon fibre, tubular steel and aluminium. We're pretty confident that there's a fair amount of TT in the drive line too. The engine is a 2-litre 4-pot, driving all four wheels through a 6-speed manual or twin-clutch transmission. We want to convey to all those drivers who love motorsports what it feels like to sit behind the wheel of a rally car, company boss Roland Gumpert told Autocar earlier. Given the 2-litre turbo has been turned up to 414 horsepower, we suspect drivers will get a fair idea.